And John, your title is Assistant Attorney General for National Security. That makes you one of the nation's top spy hunters. And boy, have you guys done some spy hunting here. You say the North Koreans in this indictment today have been engaged in a years-long, globe-spanning cybersecurity campaign uh, that targeted up to $1.3 billion in assets around the world. You also say uh, that you've actually got pictures of the individual North Korean hackers who were allegedly involved in all of this. John, how did you catch these guys? Well, these are the investigations we do on the on the cyber side. I mean, we we catch them both through technical means and through uh, foreign intelligence. And you know, we, we work very carefully with our international partners. Obviously, the bureau is the lead for all of this. Uh, and uh, you, you know, as you say, we can identify them down to the individual. We're not saying North Korea did this. We're not saying the North Korean military did this. We're saying these three individuals who worked for the North Korean military did this. We've got the pictures of them, and yeah, they're responsible for trying to steal more than 1.2 billion dollars, making North Korea today the world's leading bank robber. Now, look, North Korea has been a bad actor in the world, on the world stage for a long time. The new angle here, though, is this cryptocurrency piece of the indictment that you guys unsealed right. today. Uh, walk us through that, because what you're saying in the indictment is that the North Koreans actually developed cryptocurrency apps that they, actually, they distributed throughout the cryptocurrency world. How right. many people who are buying and selling cryptocurrencies right now are using North Korean-designed apps that give the North Koreans a backdoor into their, into their Bitcoin wallets and other things? Well, I can't say the number, but the worrisome part is, you know, there would be no, it would not be apparent to you as a user that this was a North Korean designed app, nor would the weakness be apparent to you. So you're downloading this app in order to, you know, participate in the cryptocurrency market. And lo and behold, the North Koreans are able to use that app then to take the money out of your wallet. Uh, they were also attacking cryptocurrency exchanges directly. And of course, as you said, this is in the greater context of attacking banks and, and ATM machines as well. So the full gamut of targeting financial institutions in order to satisfy their need for cash. How much tracking of cryptocurrency can you guys do in terms of uh, U.S. intelligence around the world and U.S. law enforcement around the world? You know, the reputation of cryptocurrency is that uh, bad guys can use it to do their transactions in the dark. Does U.S. law enforcement and U.S. intelligence actually have the ability to penetrate that and figure out where the bad guys are around the world? Yeah, I mean, cryptocurrency is not as opaque as I think a lot of people think it to be. It can be analyzed. We can trace cryptocurrency exchanges and the way that money moves around the world. So yes, we do have the capability uh, to do that. And that's the way in which we were able to see what the North Koreans were doing here. And uh, in, in some cases, uh, you know, follow that uh, money around the world as they're trying to steal it and then launder it back into North Korea. I want to shift topics on you here real quick because we did get an update today from the White House on that solar winds hack, which the White House says is of likely Russian origin. They haven't pinned that, that down specifically and they certainly haven't given us the pictures of the three people allegedly involved in that. My question for you <laughs> on the solar winds hack, though, ultimately is, I mean, this is a huge penetration of the U.S. federal government. But also the White House right. said today for the first time that 100 companies have been compromised as a result of that hack as well. Right. We haven't seen anything near 100 companies come out and confess that they've been penetrated uh, by Ru the Russians or anybody else in that hack. How right. many companies are there out there who've been penetrated and know it and are not telling investors that they've been penetrated, do you think? Well, that's not a, a question that I have a, the, the answer to on that. But this hack was far greater than just, uh, you know, the U.S. government. As you say, they targeted about 100, maybe even more U.S. companies. We're still doing the assessments here and looking at, you know, the scope and the scale of this hack uh, to measure what the effects of it was. And ultimately, do you think you're going to have an answer in the next weeks, months? Is this going to be a years long process? Not not years long. I mean, folks are working just as fast as they can uh, to get their arms around this. So more in the in the months uh, category, you know, in terms of the sort of the scope of of what's happening here. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.